They're going to try to continue to play this game. They'll have five minutes to warm up. And, and, and uh, hopefully, uh, Skip would take it down. Skip, let me okay. finish. Let me, All right, okay. Go ahead. Hey, Let's go, well, Jan. It's been a few days since one of the most horrific incidents that we've ever seen on a football field. I don't think it's a stretch to say that it was the most horrific incident that we've ever seen on a football field. But fortunately for us, there's some good news in this video in regards to DeMar Hamlin's health. And it brings me solace to be the one to bring you guys this news. And at least I get to come to you guys with a very positive video today. In addition, we have an update in regards to how the NFL plans to handle this, multiple fallouts between analysts, and of course, probably the most important thing in all of this is Damara Hamlin's health. So before we get to the content, if you guys are interested, make sure you check out Damara Hamlin's toy drive in the description down below. If you can't donate any money to his toy drive, then of course, you'll find a link to my tweet where you could go ahead and retweet it and spread the word as well. Now that we got all that out of the way, break. Mike check one two one two. What's going on, everybody? So very shortly after this insane incident occurred, the NFL obviously got a decent amount of flack for it because we did cover this in our previous video. Joe Buck literally said during the broadcast that the teams were expected to resume playing. As we said, they've been given five minutes to quote unquote get ready to go back to playing. Word we get from the league and the word we get from down on the field, but nobody's moving. The NFL eventually tried to cover up this whole thing. Troy Vincent came out and said that was never the plan to begin with, which honestly, in hindsight, is looking more and more like a lie each and every day in an attempt by the NFL to save face. But again, man, I just want you guys to bear in mind that the NFL was in an unprecedented situation. There isn't really a handbook for how to handle a situation like DeMar Hamlin sustained, where his heart stopped beating on the field and he had to be resuscitated. I mean, if you just look at the face of Josh Allen and Joe Burrow and every player on the field at that time, you could just tell from the look on their face and the mental toll the situation took on them. And this is an unprecedented situation. Imagine how you felt watching the situation unfold at home. And then imagine being on the field for the incident. And then imagine being the commissioner of the league in which this incident occurred, needing to make a quick decision right away. Ultimately, I'm glad that the right decision was made and that the game wasn't played because no one seemed like they were in a position to continue playing. And since then, the NFL actually released this memo to tell us what's going on. So from Commissioner Goodell, during last night's game between the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals, Bills safety DeMar Hamlin collapsed on the field. DeMar experienced cardiac arrest and was promptly resuscitated by on-site club physicians and independent medical personnel, all of whom are highly trained in implementing the plans for medical emergency. DeMar was stabilized and transported to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, a level one trauma center where he remains in the ICU. After speaking with both teams and NFLPA leadership, I decided to postpone last night's game and have our focus remain on DeMar and his family. We are in regular contact with both clubs, with the medical team caring for DeMar, and will share additional information as we receive it. Earlier today, the head of player engagement and team clinician for each club received information from Dr. Nayaka Nilempti about mental health and support resources that are available to your players and staff. Additional sources, including on-site services, can be available for any club that wishes this assistance. If your club would like to make use of those additional resources, please have your player engagement lead or team clinician contact the doctor. A short time ago and after discussions with the two teams and the NFLPA, we advised Buffalo and Cincinnati that last night's game will not be resumed this week. No decision has been made regarding the possible resumption of the game at a later date and we have not announced any changes to this weekend's schedule. We will promptly advise all clubs of any decisions that are made regarding these matters. If you have any questions in the meantime, please call me or any of our senior your staff, which ultimately was the right call. And I'm very thankful that it seems like both the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals handled this situation really, really well. In addition to the NFL, I mean, this is what the Cincinnati Bengals had to say. First and foremost, the Bengals continue to send thoughts and prayers to DeMar Hamlin and his family. Our hearts are with everyone in this unprecedented time. What we can do is support one another. Last night was supposed to be a great night for the NFL and a great showcase for our hometown. Instead, the human side of our sport became paramount. And in that moment, humanity and love rose to the forefront. As medical 
personnel undertook extraordinary measures, both teams demonstrated respect and compassion, while fans in the club and people around the country bolstered their support for DeMar and love for one another. The Bengals are thankful for the love and compassion showed by all, praying for DeMar. If there's an individual that's taking this situation very, very harshly, it's T. Higgins. After all, it was Hamlin's attempt on T. Higgins that resulted in him going into cardiac arrest. Now, I'm not pointing the blame finger here at T. Higgins. Football is a contact sport with freak athletes that have incredible amounts of strength. And in order to sustain what Kamar Hamlin sustained, you would need a specific amount of force at a particular time to occur. And unfortunately, it seemed like that's what happened. But unfortunately for us, it doesn't seem like the majority of analysts feel the same way. We already covered extensively how this situation has affected the top sports show in the United States, Skip and Shannon Undisputed, in our previous video. And currently, it seems like these two have reached a brand new low in their relationship with one another. Just as a quick little follow-up to our last video, Shannon Sharp, following an absence the day after the incident, reappeared on Undisputed, and while the results weren't necessarily the greatest. There's been a lot of speculation of why I wasn't on air yesterday watching that game on Monday night. As a brotherhood in the NFL, when injuries happen, when we know injuries are a part of the game, they struck me a little differently because I remember seeing my brother paralyzed on the field. Skip tweeted something, and although I disagree with the tweet... No, come out. I'm not going to take it down because okay. I stand by okay. what I tweeted. I cannot even get through a monologue without you interrupting okay. me. Well, you could have came back. Skip, well, I, thought I didn't want to yesterday to get into a situation where DeMar Hamlin was the issue. Which is under the impression you weren't going to bring this up. Clearly, the boss is wanted you to offer explanation so clearly somebody no, they did problem. not have the i'm not gonna lie i'm a little disappointed in myself it completely flew over my head when i was making my 16 minute long video about skip and shannon that shannon sharp clearly had this hit home for him as a result of sterling sharp career being prematurely ended and that was as a result of skip bayless's tweet following the damar hamlin incident which i've already said on record was just a poor choice of timing and a poor choice of words in a very sensitive time and i personally personally interpreted it a little bit differently than a majority of people but unfortunately that's the position that Skip is in and we already have a whole video on that. Now if you think that was bad from Skip Bayless you should see what occurred on his show with his former running mate Stephen A. Smith. So I'm gonna warn you guys this is just a clip that I saw from Dove Kleiman. Could it be taken out of context? Possibly. Dove Kleiman posted this video where Bart Scott literally pointed the blame finger at T. Higgins for the entire incident. Right before the tackle he lowers his helmet and he kind of throws his body into his chest. He didn't expect T. Higgins to launch his body back into him. They've taken that out of the game, but they don't really regulate it as much as possible. Personally, man, this really bothers me. I feel like there's such a lack of empathy towards a young man that is clearly going through it because T. Higgins obviously didn't want this to be the result. T. Higgins has his own charity that we will be linking in the description down below if you want to go ahead and support his charity as well. Bart Scott would continue to say that what T. Higgins did was illegal and he should have been penalized for lowering his helmet. He blamed him for what happened. Higgins actually hit him with the shoulder. It was a normal football play. ESPN themselves even clarified it during the show. Honestly, this really, really bothered me. Just a lack of empathy, a lack of understanding what a man is going through mentally, and just sitting there and being an armchair analyst and saying, yeah, this is all T. Higgins' fault. I just think this is a very disgusting take to have. And you know who would agree with this? Mar Hamlin's mother, who would go ahead and tweet this emoji. So you can see there's a gigantic series of events that occurred as a result of this tragic incident, but it's time for us to bring you guys the good news. First coming from the incredibly courageous Hamlin family who posted this memo yesterday. On behalf of our family, we want to express our sincere gratitude for the love and support shown to DeMar during this challenging time. We are deeply moved by the prayers, kind words, and donations from fans around the country. We also want to acknowledge the dedicated first responders and healthcare professionals at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center who have provided exceptional care to DeMar. We feel so blessed to be part of the Buffalo Bills organization and to have their support. We also want to thank Coach Zach Taylor and the Bengals for everything they've done. Your generosity and compassion mean the world to us. Please keep DeMar in your prayers. We will release updates as soon as we have them. Thank you, the Hamlin family. Honestly, man, from Stefan Diggs yelling at an officer to let him in so he could be there for his teammate, all the way to seeing Cincinnati Bengals fans and Buffalo Bills fans come together for this very difficult time, it really showed the power of humanity and how beautiful the football community could be in very dark times when they come together. And this is probably my 
my favorite part of the video. First, coming from Josina Anderson earlier on today, saying that according to her, she received word this evening that Damar Hamlin's breathing is improving, so we're going to continue to pray. The next update I'm gonna bring to you guys is very important to me personally, because it seemed like there was a misconception as to how long Hamlin was knocked out for to begin with and how many times he had to be resuscitated, which is good because there's a chance, I'm not saying definitively, there's a chance that he didn't sustain as much damage as we once thought. So here's the update from Coley Harvey, who has been the best source for this information so far, who said, just chatted with Damar Hamlin's family friend at Jordan Rooney. Per Jordan and Damar's family, doctors overnight got promising readings that they had been hoping to see by this morning. Jordan couldn't go into specifics, but progress appears to be made. Damar is still sedated and in critical condition in the ICU. Jordan also clarified on behalf of the family that there may have been some miscommunications in terms of the number of times Damar Hamlin was resuscitated. There was only one instance at Paycor Stadium. We'll have more on ESPN throughout the morning and day. We recorded an interview. Two other comments to look for from him. Damar's father is among those calling for any criticisms of Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins to stop. He ended it by saying this, want to be sure I reiterate that although a small hopeful step appears to have been made, Jordan did mention that DeMar still has a long way to go in his recovery, but the family's optimism remains high and steady as it's been throughout all of this. That's honestly incredible news, man. I mean, yeah, he has a long way to go, but at the very minimum, the fact that there's progress being made in a positive direction is honestly all you could ask for at this point. I'm gonna do my best to bring you guys as many updates as I can to this situation. I apologize if my thoughts were a little scattered. I'm currently on four hours of sleep. It is late as hell here in Israel. So until the next update, and hopefully it's a positive one, I'm your boy, Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.